I had an interesting experience recently when I was <laughs> in Canada where I was traveling with my son and uh, it was an interesting experience of God's provision. He was driving the car and we had pulled up at a restaurant to eat food and he parked the car and I was on the passenger seat side and I opened the car to get out and my car door just like the driving mirror of the next car just touched it but inside that car was sitting a very angry man <laughs> he was just about to pull out that's why he was there and maybe because he was white and he saw me as dark skinned he began to yell and call me the, believe it or not, the filthiest names I've ever heard in 75 years. <laughs> I've never heard such names. All types of filth. And uh, you know, my son's family was in the car, little small children, grandchildren were all there. Well, I said, I'm sorry, but nothing has happened. There's not even a scratch. No, he said, you got to pay. There's been a scratch here. And he came out and looked. Of course, there was no scratch anywhere. <laughs> he tried to open the car door and he found it didn't even touch his. I said, how could there be a scratch? Anyway, I stood there for some time and he was yelling at me, yelling at me. I never said anything. And the more I kept quiet, he yelled. And just as I was standing there with some, there was a construction worker who was coming for his lunch also. These construction workers wear helmets and special white man with jackets. He saw this fellow yelling at me and he came up to him and said, what are you doing yelling at this person? I don't even know who this guy is. <laughs> you know, God's angels have strange dresses sometimes. <laughs> they come in all types of clothing. <laughs> And uh, that man told this construction worker, you want to get involved in this? He said, yes, I want to get involved in this. <laughs> and he told me to quietly go. I walked off while this discussion <laughs> went on <laughs> between these people. <laughs> and when that chap saw that I was no longer there and this guy was taking up for me, he just pulled out and went away. And I said, Lord, I have seen the fulfillment of that verse. The eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the whole earth to see how he can support someone whose heart is completely his. My heart was completely the Lord's proved by the fact that I was not going to yell back at him, I was not going to be angry with him. Uh, so God sends his angel along <laughs> to strongly support me and it was very interesting. Of course I, I prayed for that man who yelled at me, I said, maybe it is the opportunity to pray that he'll get saved and he'll repent and find Christ. So my wife was concerned about, hey, it's my, all these grandchildren hearing this filthy language. It's terrible. But I hope, I said, I hope those grandchildren will also see how I responded to all that filthy yelling at me. And if that memory stays in their mind, that will also be good. What I want to say is, my brothers, God allows us to live in a world where people are anti-God. They will treat you badly. This is nothing. This is like a mosquito bite. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, even in little things, you can see the hand of God showing you, you are to be a nobody. Now, if I thought I was a very important person over there, I'd yell back at him. I'd say, how dare you yell at me? Do you know who I am? <laughs> but I'm a nobody. I want to ask you, have you become a nobody? Life is very blessed when you're a nobody. Anybody can do anything to you. That's how Paul was. They imprisoned him, they beat him, they hammered him. and I said, that's fine, who am I? And he was the greatest servant of God on earth. God picks up nobodies and makes them his greatest servants.